It is my pleasure to introduce Tree Team 17, who has taken on a very challenging assignment uh, of, 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 of applying CNN deep learning technology to serial data, which is normally reserved for LSTM type approaches. Uh, the title is Deep Learning um, Application to ECG Sensor Noise Reduction, comparing it to LSTM to CNN. The um, agenda, which slide two, is broken into four parts. The uh, first part is the problem statement. Uh, basically, this is a new technique, which is state of the art, that gave results that are far superior, which will be summarized. Um, the second part of the uh, agenda here is going to be the MATLAB implementation using uh, both CNN and LSTM comparing them plus a demo. Uh, the third, which we will you know, discuss in more detail, uh, it, it has quite a bit of information actually, and we'll summarize that at the end. Uh, also on the third part, we will be doing synthetic uh, ECG signal generation. It turns out that the um, normal signals are not able to give you an accurate signal to noise ratio. So synthetic ECG signals had to be developed. Last part is uh, TensorFlow doing a similar architecture to the original MATLAB that was presented in the article. Um, these results will be compared with the MATLAB and summarized. Uh, next, slide three, uh, going into the problem statement. Uh, commercial low-cost wearable sensors have quite a bit of noise and they suffer from drift. This includes Apple Watch, etc. So there is a, an interest in methods to reduce noise. So our goal is to use deep nano network to remove noise from the noisy signal. The first nano network we use is CNN. Figure 1 shows the structure of CNN. It has 27 layers. The first layer is an image input layer of size 30,000 times 1 times 1 with zero central normalization. So 30,000 is the number of samples per input ECG signal. And uh, that means we need to resample our signal to 3000 Hz with duration 10 seconds. We also need to reshape data set from 1D to 4D in order to use image input layer. This module also has six two-dimensional convolution layers, each having 36 filters with kernel size of 90 times one per filter. Each convolution layer has nanos that connect to parts of the input feature or connect to the output of previous layer. The second nano network we use is based on the LSTM layer. The module has seven layers. The first layer is a sequence input layer with input size 30,000. The module consists of two LSTM layer with 140 hidden nodes per layer. The LSTM layer has nanos that connect to the input layer and the ReLU layer. For the software, we have used MATLAB 2021B version. For the add-on, the team needs to install Deep Learning Toolbox and the Signal Processing Toolbox before running the code. For the implementation steps, the first step is to load data set and do data pre-processing. This step contains resample frequency to 3000 Hz and the reshape data set from 1D to 4D. The second step is to divide data set into training and testing. 75% for training, 25% for testing. Then we define module architecture and set training option and start training. Table 1 and Table 2 shows details of training parameters. The last step is to test module using test data set and see if the module can remove noise from the signal. So I'm going to show you a demo video of our CNN module. We use white Gaussian noise as our input data, learning the code. It is normalizing input data. Now it will begin training. So here the first graph is mini batch IMSE. The second graph is for mini batch loads. As you can see, the IMC is going down and also loss is going down. After 40 epochs, the mini batch IMC is about 2.69.
and uh, this is the output for one of the text signal. The first plot is noisy data with white Gaussian noise. The second plot is what we predict. We can clearly see the white Gaussian noise has been removed. For another case, we use artificial noise as our input. We use seven steps and training. As you can see, the RMSE Pro is rougher compared to last one. This is because the artificial noise is real data, and uh, it is more inconsistent than white Gaussian noise. And uh, this is our test result, and the artificial noise has been removed. The database we use are same as the paper we have seen. We have three main databases. The first one is the real ECG data from the MIT database, and the second one is the simulate ECG data generated by the MATLAB function. And, and we also add, add some white noise in this database. The third database, the third database is also the the simulation chain signal we made from the a math lab and we will also add some some drift noise on this database and uh, we can see here this is the original clean ECG signal we have from the MIT database and we add some uh, what this is the signal we add some white noise on this on this on this clean ECG signals uh, and this is the ECG signal with artificial noise here, here is the clean signal we make, we generate from the MATLAB code, and uh, we add some white noise and the drift noise. Why need the drift signal? The drift noise is very important and very common in our life. It will, it will choose by the movement. For example, if we want to get some signal from get some ECG signals when we are running, and so it's very important to solve this problem. This is the MATLAB code we use. Um, we get from the internet to help us us simulate some ECG clean signals. If I press the one here, it will give us us a diff a default ECG signals, just like this. But um, we can also choose to we can also choose the heart heartbeat rate and the, the the each amplitude of each uh, of different waves. Okay. I press two. Okay, I I tap the uh, heart rate at sixty six, and uh, I will use the default value for each amplitude of the of different waves. And we can see it will have a it, it, the the frequency of the ECG signal will changed, and the based on Based on this, based on this code, I write the I write the code for 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 our project, and we can get a we can get a random heartbeat from the fifty seven to sixty seven, and uh, with the the QRS we will have a different value different from two, uh, different from the one to two. After from this, we will we will resample the simulate uh, simulate ECG signals for um, from one thousand to uh, to a one hundred frame rate to three thousand frame rate, and then we will add some use the code to add some drift noise and uh, white noise the result. Okay. The result is like this. Hey there, my name is Vichar Shumuthumani and I will be talking through the implementation of the same uh, denoising like model, but this one was built using TensorFlow API. Okay, so we will have a look at the code in TensorFlow. First section of code is used to load the data from the CSV files, both clean and the noisy uh, data. Right. The next section of code is used to split the data into 75% test and 25% for training. All right. 
So, <laughs> so the next section of code is used to transform the data from 1D to 4D to be used inside the CNN. We've designed, I've kind of defined some callbacks to keep track of the training times and another function to record the RMC value. Next section is used to define the neural network. First four lines of code are used to define the convolutional layer, the batch, new, batch normalization layer, like the redo layer and the pooling layer. We've got six of these repeated and like that's what was required in the paper. So the last layer would be the F F FCN layer. Its job is to give out the ECG signal with all the noise like removed from it. It's like a regression layer, the final layer. Okay, so training starts, training continues. Okay, once the training is done, let's have a plot of the, of the value and trends of the validation RMSE. Okay, it's been plotted. From the plot, you can see that the value has dropped steeply down to a very low value. So that shows that like during training, we were able to train the weights to a good level. Right. Next, let's have a look at the out outputs. Okay. So the first plot is showing us like a noisy e e ECG. Uh, we feed this into the CNN for it to denoise. The next plot is showing us the expected output. What we expect to happen if we do denoising properly with our CNN. The third plot, this is the most important one, right? So, so the third plot is showing us how well our CNN has done in removing the noise from the noisy ECG signal. So I'm like laying the denoise signal on top of the expected output. It looks like they seem to follow each other like really close. And like the final output is the value of the RMC score. It is around uh, 0.1. So running tests on my local machine for a sample size of five and for 40 epochs showed that the value of the validation MSC was lower for TensorFlow compared to MATLAB. But in terms of the training time, so like MATLAB took like a shorter time to train compared to TensorFlow.